Before starting, I would like to know if all the English-speaking persons great who have the headsets are happy. Great, is it's working then? So I will, in fact, speak Italian and you will have the English slides. So, right. So I will now switch to Italian in a few seconds. But I love English. No, but but right. I I love English, but I, I will speak Italian. Right, so to start with, I've seen something incredible, the organization of uh, this continuity between the Professor San Giovanni Vincentelli and then Alfonso Fuggetta. Um, as you see, I will make the continuity, and I'm very happy because they have given all the great examples um, together. So first thing, it is quite obvious to see that, you know, it's strange. Between 1963 and this last study of 2012, the speed which is growing of collaboration, scientific collaboration on, net, on the network is quite impressive. And it depends on the uh, arrival of the network because you, you see it's not so, so present. But then it will increase in volume and speed and collaboration at international level for, science, for research, scientific research. This is quite huge. And you can see that in the uh, research it seems that astronomy is dominating the quantity of collaboration. And in fact, they must study all the path and uh, all the different things. Physics is fascinating, really fascinating. And, you know, it goes forward. And for me, it's uh, impressive because I am dealing will all those topics trying to, you know, deal with uh, Cartesian duality and from body and spirit together, divided while I'm trying to unite them. So math, and it seems that uh, it's quite inevitable to practice mathematics, but then biologics, chemistry, and this is a high market, and medicine, and obviously uh, engineering. So uh, we have the different levels which are uh, seen here on those graphs. Right. Then what about the uh, creation, where it goes to? You have oral culture first, where information and uh, divulgation goes through people from person to person in real time. So there's no other memories than, you know, the people sharing the memories. So uh, it means that you put science or knowledge, you know, together in order to recognize experience. And then you think that your dictionary is, or, or, yeah, is the, or the oldest object in the culture, you know, because it uh, remembers a lot of things. And what happens in all those generations of uh, writing? Uh, you know, and written tradition. Two things. First, knowledge, which is get, getting very uh, deeper, and uh, then the access to culture. So you create a, a, a relationship uh, where well, you have a lot of people sharing knowledge and diffuse it. And specifically, you try to to accelerate that connectivity between people in the same process. And 
then it means that you have that acceleration of connectivity, which is, uh, of course, uh, oral culture, and then it is becoming global through electricity. So we must uh, remember that we are dealing with three different steps of language, human language. First, body language, then paper diffusion, and then electricity, so-called, not digital. Electricity, because digital is only one aspect of electricity, of course. So here, you can see, you know, after telephone, radio, television, you have a growth which, uh, you know, did not stop, and that is still growing. It's incredible because you have, you know, all these things, internet and Yahoo and whatever, social media. It is very complex. It is very efficient. And all, th all those values also uh, are higher. So digital culture is the cognitive faces of electricity because the first uses of electricity through telegraph uh, was to give a signal, not to create it. You, you gave the signal and then you also uh, heated the space and give light. Well, this is the same way of working, let's say muscular way of working of electricity. But since it is, you know, digitalized, it is linked to language and cognition. So it means you are in a situation of uh, accelerated cognition of varieties, telegraph, radio are all connected to language. Then we go to internet. That creates a relationship which is totally different between the user of uh, so-called, you know, electronic um, cognition. Now, on a scientific point of view, what happened? Well, we made a great progress with a uh, world wide web. That is the great invention. And you have then a growth of efficiency in that interconnection. And um, we wanted at that time to have connectivity developed and connectivity with a lot of elements, scientific connection, and in the uh, CERN, in the research center, you have incredible connection there. You have one, you know, 100,000 researchers all over the world collaborate to understand better how is, you know, physics being uh, built and diffused. So connected intelligence is something that already exists since the beginning. As uh, we saw it on the first slide, we have a, con a connected intelligence between people, because people, uh, you know, was like watching TV uh, inside the families and connectivity started with one word, with one person, but then um, how did it accelerate through the, the web, actually, on the web? you have a great diffusion and impact of our practice of uh, the web, of course, and that created a condition, psychological condition, which is different. And we've already heard uh, about those things, and we, we can come back to that in a second. So this is a mapping we have given in order to see how connected intelligent intelligence is uh, made. So you have all the links, connection, Harold Dignis, Dr. Vibrin, and others. And it is interesting to see uh, they have put all together the connected intelligence with all the trends, mental trends, which goes, which, which goes to that, you know, reflection. And 
which kind of intelligence does exist. We have community, the community, oral culture, but also uh, private culture. You know, you have an interaction and exchange of stories, of uh, thoughts. So all this is then put in the uh, culture so we are still individuals and uh, all, all the, you know, uh, people want to read uh, the different books. And, of course, through writing processes, we have invented a lot of things. And uh, the important thing is really to share that kind of culture. And this is really inter internalization of uh, language and also silence of language creates a situation where everyone has the, the right consciousness and you put a lot of things together, you make projects and then uh, you, know, you create different things. But now the situation has really uh, changed a lot. Uh, for the first time in the story of communication, and thinking, we are not, uh, I mean, we do not handle our own uh, thought, actually, and we're not the owner of it. And we, as we saw with the, the, the other colleagues, well, uh, it happens a lot. It means that all the things which, you know, are produced are trust, uh, have a traceability, which means that we're not the owner or we're not all or owner of our own you know, thoughts. Uh, so this is incredible. <coughs> so probably it's so important because the future will really, you know, change. Even the present is not the same. If you go to Singapore, for example, go and see what happens there. Well, you have uh, inhabitants of Singapore which are traced, always, even in the bathroom. They cannot get out of the rooms or, or bathroom without wearing clothes, you know, because it could it could uh, then uh, be thought as you know non uh, not correct or. So what does that mean? Collective intelligence, in fact is linked to the society, to mass media, for example. So, uh, and then you have, of course, television and the others, but the collective way of thinking comes from those mass media. And with the internet, then you get to connectivity. And in that sense, it's not an indetermined mass of people, but people involved, you have each individual contributing to that. And we are traced, we are put together, we are recognized as collaborators of one thought that is emerging. So web to web zero, web to web emotional as well. So we, th we switch from intelligence to emotions. And... Um, then we have this other slide, 16 billion of device, de devices which are connected, the so-called connected objects. Well, um, even here you have growth. I mean, it is temptation to uh, create something new. I mean, how to see the differences and the services of the different configurations inside the web. It, it is linked to... Uh, the uh, relationship between the persons to their blogs, exchange of non-real time uh, information. And then wiki is something different. You can put an information which, which is correct from another person. So it is an interaction which is totally uh, you know, uh, useful from Wikipedia to others. The speed as well and the reduction of the language through SMS you know, text, uh, text message. Uh, text message actually was also, also new as a form of communication as well. But then, what about Google? Well, this is um, a dimension 
of our way of looking for things is, rev is being revealed in 3D. 3D on Second Life is a, play is a game, actually, how to play with that game. Are you still on Second Life, by the way? No one is raising their hands. Okay, so you're great scientists, and this is why I am interested in that. But, you know, um, Second Life has been a momentum of, you know, in our history of our cognition connected story. So, really, our way of thinking on different screens shared with other persons. And it is, as we say in French, balbutiement, which means, you know, trying to whisper something. Ge getting to with total surround. So you have vibrations creating cognitive system shared. So called snapshot, right? So uh, this is obvious. And when I, you know, realized that app made for the youngest, but used also by adults, it was um, evaluated by three billion dollars, so incredible, with those teenagers which were using it, so uh, they just refused the offer they received for Snapchat, but anyway, what do I mean? It's useful. They offer a service. Then, Twitter, very interesting as well, social bookmarking, the way the relationship for science, putting together a tag on different things and uh, the clouds and, uh, you see, all those things which are really useful for uh, scientific research. So, apps, and then one word of industry, that's word, um, when you lose your imagination on what is uh, important and done on computers, so telecom services give signal and invent something new. Cloud computing is one of those devices. Uh, you have a metaphor because it worked very well. The, the metaphor based on, uh, you know, probably a poet here and there in telecom, but it worked. Then, we have a study which reflects the way of how to use internet on research and uh, diffusion of knowledge. So we, we can have in these months the cities dedicated to science. Well, this is quite interesting. I, I have, on a scientific point of view, a great point here, which is the public, the audience that we have, which is ha very well educated and very, uh, you know, used to uh, answers questions about science, for example. So, what is in interesting as well, it's the future of science. So, where is the direction through the apps, where are we going? So half cycle is a, a graph where you see the different uh, types of enthusiasm of people, or, you know, govern and uh, different things, uh, to see the arrival of a new metaphor as big data. So big data is the, the, the perfect metaphor, right? I have a few minutes left. So we have a lot of expectations about that uh, future. We want it in the right, at the right moment when we want it, so we have the willingness, social willingness, which is very, very well diffused, to, uh, you know, 
develop things, to predict things. And when you predict things, it's very difficult, but at the same time, very interesting. So the revolution in cognition now, it is quite externalized as screenology, as we said. So outside, you know, outside of our heads, then it is published, shared, archived, and a new order of pertinence, hyper pertinence. So, in fact, we, we want to share that kind of uh, cognition altogether. And all these steps, and the last one as the new order of pertinence, as we said, hyper-pertinence, why? It is useful to understand what happened here. Look at the hierarchy, the first axis of pertinence. When I studied, it was very interested. I was in Toronto, you know, studying in the library, and I needed to make classifications and trying to use the different systems of hierarchy. And first axis of pertinence means the categories where to go. And the tag era, so-called, it is, you know, sent from one place to another, and it refers to that place. It means that instead of following the hierarchy, tags are interconnecting from one word to another, from one book to another. So all those uh, points of hierarchy are intertagged, and then the hierarchy is falling, collapsing. So it's not that your hierarchy, hierarchy is not useful. Of course it is. But classifications are different. Or, you know, we had encyclopedia, a classification, but then we have a third axis of pertinence. And that is the really new aspect. People getting inside the web, the site, evaluating it, and then trying to find new results on those, you know, statistics that are done. So you have vertical, horizontal lines, and also volume. So this is the conscious that we have, totally new. So weighing which is the really the new axis. So then, what about the new aspect? Hypertax intelligence. People able to follow one thinking, but also different lines. You know, one line, different lines of thinking. So hypertexting. What about horoscopes? Oh, two people follow there. Is great. So anyway, a lot of information from different places. So what is important in that context? You see two lines which are, you know, predicting the future, for example, and you see them. You think, what are the connection, what is the face, this is the world, this is the place. Anyway, you place all the uh, memories that you have trying to get an interpretation on, uh, on, 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 on you know, the, the context. So who is the person? And this is how we think. We have a vision trying to put all the elements that we want all together. And then you go and switch to different places and you make a unique hypertext of their uh, cognition. So we have really new conditions of cognition. So hypertext, then uh, information without limits of format, and then uh, space, time, and different things. Immersion, uh, collection of data, uh, you know, sharing between people, interaction, and a lot of involvement from the population. Very quickly, now to conclude, we want to share eight hours per day on screens. And each of the moments we share on the screen, instead of 
counting on the synthesis that we have of semiotics of internal thinking, we are trying to use it uh, with something coming from the screen. And this is a new shape of cognition. We are making publications, and when I was young, in fact, I needed to develop my own identity inside the silence or secret that I, we had at that time. But anyway, you know, young people now, teenager, go on the web and they just, you know, share different things in silence. So we are, you know, in that process, we are, we are trying to imagine and um, use our new emotions and how to develop them. So oh, we have big successes, we have a lot of, you know, new elements which are elements and emotions all together, as we said, which are not very easy to handle, actually. So what are the emerging factors then? We have the digital unconsciousness. We all have that digital in consciousness, which is the communication of those data in a database, all put together, and uh, you know, nothing till then. But then, when you ask a question, it, ch it changes. And big data is quite strange on that. It is like a paradigmatical change, like a driver from connectivity to transparency. Connectivity, which is, which is new, it is like, you know, transparent condition, um, which is new in the history of, of, of human beings. So transparency is coming inside us also with the bracelets that we have, that we wear, all of us, to, to, to give information of our health. So an incredible transparency in that point. Right, I really need to speed up now. So now, the consequences of this evolution, well, I'm late, so let's switch to the really second part, coming back to the uh, last part of my abstract. Well, we want to create different possibilities for research, but also, in fine, we also have consequences which are seen from McLuhan point of view in the 66. He had seen, he had developed that, you know, electronic world of today is something really different, difficult and mainly people are involved altogether with private identity which is collapsing. Salvatore Tonesi, which is very interesting, made a great point on this one, but we'll come back to it afterwards. So Pinocchio 2.0 is something really interesting. You had, you know, variations of uh, technology in the Po region, uh, from Tuscany uh, working to uh, Turin in Italy, so they just... Uh, you know, had new, new ways of development from Charlie Chaplin or Michelangelo, a lot of things all together. Uh, anyway, uh, the history of, of Pinocchio 1.0 is one of the most Im impressive myths all over the world. And it is the idea of getting, I mean, going forward the machine. You know, you leave the machine, you, you, you turn up a child, and then you must stop lying on your condition as, uh, you know, uh, a non-human being, so being a Muppet, for example, in that case. So this is like the idea of the whale becoming, when, when the, the, the child is inside the whale, you remember that episode? So, well, 
Pinocchio 2.0 then, and concluding on this one, um, digital unconsciousness, so you have, in that case, a matrix avatar or others, but the American society is having a you know, great quantity of uh, types, actually, of these kind of elements. So we want to come back as avatars and the destiny that we have, as we see it, it mixes the real aspect with the virtual one, and, and we want in that idea to go, as I said, uh, forward, to, to you know, live the, the machine and to, and to be something different. So this is so true, and the different changes that we have in Italy with re Renaissance period of time and culture dedicated to religion, switching to another culture identified as um, Michelangelo Renaissance or different kind of you know identities for artists at that time. So a lot of things all together which are uh, mixing. But anyway, now we have switched to that reality. So living, you know, that the machines going forward and below and uh, so, sorry beyond the machines. So this is quite incredible and. This kind of meeting allows us really to uh, develop that concept. Thank you so much.